resources wise. It's the BAP and also the Kiriko. So what are you doing? You're peeling off the resources from the Reinhardt and you're distributing the resources to somewhere else, which is the Widow, right? So what does that mean? That means the Reinhardt on this team, on blue team, he now only has one support. Your Reinhardt on your team has both his supports and also a Widow in the back, right? So he has double the support. He's going to out out resource this guy in no time if you are able to pull the support away from the main fight and put him onto the widow i don't need this anymore i'm not playing anymore all right so we got what tracer on drunker town pretty good pick because there's a lot of snipers all right aka widow wango stad all right so tracer is always a strong pick on attack and defense here um, knowing that there's always going to be Widows, your job as Tracer is to create space for your Widow so that your Widow can pop off more than the enemy Widow, okay? Especially if you have a Widow and the enemy has a Widow. If it's a Widow versus Widow, your job is to make your other Widow's life easier. Because if you can take care of the enemy Widow, your Widow's going to have, she's going to have a lot of fun, okay? Her main problem is the enemy widow. The more space you can buy for your widow, the better. So she's going to be your job okay, when you have a widow, for sure. Even if you don't have a widow on your team, taking care of the widow is going to help alleviate a lot of that pressure from your team and your team can just push through. So she is your, because especially you just got to figure out what map it is, right? Junker Town is super, 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 super popular for widow. Um, Havana is really super popular for widow. Rialto, sometimes. Okay. Uh, can we see the skin? Which skin? This one? Oh, okay. I think we've seen enough, guys. <laughs> nice. Okay. Go down one. Oh, you fell off. You gave the high run. That's okay. We're fine. I definitely would have liked to see you stay on high ground to apply more pressure. Okay, so a little bit of a dangerous route, a little bit weird routing. Okay. Especially with the Kirigo out here. Okay. Blinking out in the open like this. Okay. This is uh, pretty dangerous for you to do because now you're blinking wide. You're blinking wide into the Kiriko and also the BAP. If they both shoot you once and the Kiriko lands a headshot, you just die instantly. Okay? So you have to be very, very careful. You have to respect the Kiriko. Um, you are up already. Okay? It's okay for you to um, be aggressive, but you don't want to give them free shots. So where can you also go where you can deal with the BAP here? All right? Where can you go? You can blink towards this direction. Right? Because if you blink here, what happens? So the enemy team just lost two recently. They're not going to be coming back from spawn. Right? They're not going to be coming back from spawn soon. Um, so you don't have to worry about this area. Right? According to the kill feed, there should not be anybody here because of how soon they died. So it's okay for you to blink here and use this pillar to LOS the Kiriko. Do some damage from the bath. Be a little bit safer. It's okay. And then I thought then you finished them off. Right? You don't want to die here. You don't want to die here. It's not going to be the end of the world if you die here, but it's better just not to die. Okay, because especially with a Kiriko on the enemy team, she can just nail you and just kill you instantly. Right. That's just a little bit of a dangerous position to put yourself in. A little bit, a little bit risky. Right. That doesn't give you a lot of value blinking out in the open like that, is what I'm trying to say. So, you kind of be a little bit careful. You don't want to be careless, is what I'm saying. Remember, she doesn't have a range buff anymore. She doesn't have a range buff anymore. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, she doesn't have a range buff. So you, there's no reason for you to be poking from that far. I try to give my Widow a free shot with a distraction. That makes sense. But the thing is, it's like based off of the location, right? Based off of the location. Um, if they're up here, right? 
if they're up here. Um, that's okay if they're up here, but then the widow is like down here, right? And you're kind of drawing attention here. So, and also the widow would not peek window and also shoot you at the same time. What would the widow do? Widow would shoot here. She would stay here and then shoot at you. And then she would now, when she wants to poke at the enemy widow, then she would shoot out here, right? So timing wise, that was a little bit off in regards to the distraction. Too early, too early of a distraction if you wanted to do a distraction. But I, I, I can see what you were trying to do. But just it's just overly way too early. So they have a tracer now. You have to be very careful. Tracer can chase you down. Where do you hook? Heard that. Tracer's below you. Not bad. Pretty good. Very careful here, be very careful. Let her hit the yep. Oh you have no recall. You have no recall. Woo! They have walls too, okay. Here we go, yep. Nice. Okay. Alright. So one thing, you have to check the widow. Okay. You have to check the widow. You use walls. They use walls. Okay. You have to check the enemy widow. Where they're looking. Okay. You have to. Because when they use walls, you use walls. You don't know where she's looking. But at least look up. Just be like, where is she looking? Where is where's the widow looking at? Right? Is she looking at me? Or is she looking... She's looking like kind of across. Versus looking straight down. Just do a quick glance. Because if she's looking at your doorway, that's a headshot. You know what I mean? So just spend like half a second. Not at me? Okay, go out. You both have walls. So there's a chance that she can just be looking at your doorway. Alright? And right there, with that shatter, right? With that shatter, Kiriko here is shattered. Focus the Kiriko first. Because she's in the back line, nobody's on her. There's a chance that somebody may not be focusing her. If nobody's focusing her, you need to be the one to focus the, the, the Kiriko that's on the floor, right? Reinhardt's already attacking the Reinhardt on point. He's going to die eventually. You got to kill the Kiriko because maybe your Reinhardt already used charge. Maybe he has no fire strikes. Maybe he can't follow up with the damage. So whenever there's a shatter going on, follow up with the extra damage where the team cannot follow up with. Right. He's not the one who got shattered? Okay. Yeah, because you actually saw the Kiriko there, right? You're looking at the Kiriko. So, right here. Boom. Shatters coin doors this way. But it's okay. No worries. Not a big deal. You guys still got the kill either way. Oh, close. You saw the enemy Ryan didn't go down? Oh, okay, okay. You probably missed it on the enemy Ryan. Okay, they use Suzu. Window. Both windows. Good play. I like this position. Careful, care, care, care. Don't, you know, you're, very, very, you're one shot. You're one shot. You're one shot. Oh, I would disengage. Oh, very, very risky. At the higher you go, if you go higher in, in, in ranking, you would have been dead there. You would have been dead there. You have to check your health. You have to check your health. Okay. You were in, you were in danger zone for a very, very long time. Right here. You are 120. One headshot. One headshot from the Kiriko and you're just, you're gone. Okay. You don't want to risk it. Because you have not made the Kiriko commit anything yet. She has not committed anything to you. And she, and you're already one shot. Right? So, it's going to take a while for you to get the Kiriko dead. You can try to one clip her, but she can use her Suzu. It's going to keep her alive. It's going to heal her. Then she can keep throwing darts or kunais. And then if you're about to die again, she can teleport. Right? So... Basically, she is one hit away from killing you. You, you have to bait out a lot more cooldowns to finish her off here. This is a no-go. This is a no-go zone. 
Okay. This is an all goes down. Once you're at 120 HP, if you had not have the enemy Kiriko spend anything on you, you have to dip out. It's too risky. It's not worth the fight. I was trying to get Suzu out, but yeah, I knew I was stress testing this. Yeah. But the thing is, <laughs> are you able to get Suzu out? Because all she has to do is one. She just has to hit one. All right? You're at the point where Kirikos will start hitting those headshots. So, like, <laughs> just look at how many she had to miss. Right? She had to miss so many of them. If any of those had the headshot, you would have just fed. Right. So, like, I mean, you got the Suzu out. <laughs> I got the Suzu out. <laughs> but it's like, that was super, 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 super dangerous. How's it going, Rotary Bros? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, you gotta respect the Kiriko a little bit more. If you are at 100%, oh, that's a lamp. That's a lamp. Yeah. Not worth it. Alright. It's not worth it. Okay. Um... Not worth the stick unless you know for a fact that Bap has no stick or has no lamp. Okay. So you have to understand what your team is running. You have to understand what your team is running. If your team is running full dive and somebody can follow up with you after the lap is down, this is actually not a bad bomb. Okay. You have to consider what your team is running. So let's just say you had Monkey or Diva and you had Genji Tracer. Why would this be okay? Right. Why would this be fine? Because now, BAP has no lamp. Your team can now jump on the BAP. Your team can go in and finish off the one-shot HP. Right? Diva can go, come in, monkey can jump in, Genji can dash in, finish them off. Right? You did your job, you betted out the lamp, you have follow-up. But does your team have follow-up damage? No. Only you. You're the only dive target. Right? You're the only one that can get in. So it's like... Okay, I have to get rid of lap, and then also I have to recall, and then go back in again and finish off the bat. Right? That's the only situation, or this type of comp that you're running, you have to be, you don't want to be bombing the enemy bat like that. Unless it's a 1v1 situation, again, if it's a 1v1 situation, that's okay. But again, look, there's a, there's a Kiriko here, there's a Widow here. You cannot put that much effort into just getting a lamp out, and then not have anybody follow up. Okay? So keep in mind, what is your team comp? Is your team able to follow up with uh, you making these windows? Because you're making a big window of opportunity. This is a huge window. Like, all, the, all you need is one shot. 20 HP, just one bullet. Maybe to the head, and he just dies. But can anybody on your team follow up? No, because he can just stay behind the... He can stay behind the wall. Nobody can create distance, right? So, remember. It's very important. Because this is, what, this is how you just waste your pulse bombs over and over again. If you keep doing that, you're going to get zero value out of it. And it's just like, well... How come nine? How come they're not dying while I'm using my pulse bomb? Nobody's following up. Well, because they can't follow up. So it's very. It's there's a big, there's a fine line between making it worth it and not worth it to bomb a, a bat. <laughs> That's the difference in the situation. Yeah, you just, you just lose. Nice shots, though. Nice aiming. Nice aiming. That's uh, a little bit loud. Yo, Flash Panache. You're awesome. There's, no, 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 no. You guys are awesome. Thank you for sitting through these bonds and, you know, showing support. I appreciate y'all chilling. Hope you guys are enjoying the content. Okay. Try a different route. Yep. Yep. Recall out. You have no recall. Be very, very mindful of that. Ryan's charging in. Okay, okay. Ryan's here. That's fine. Yep, focus the Ryan. Yeah, just bomb him. That's fine. That was a good bomb. That was a smart bomb because he was in the middle of uh, nowhere. He couldn't get... Su he couldn't get... Uh, what was it? He couldn't get bap lamped. And if he wanted to get Susu'd, he would have to get teleported on and also Susu'd, which is a huge, 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 huge commitment. Right? So... All right, so when it comes down to this kind of stuff, in general, all right, we're going to talk about this. Oh, not this death. This in general, okay? So. So. 
It's, why is why is this a good bomb? Okay. It, actually, it's a little bit risky here. It would have been better for you to throw it a little bit earlier because now the Kiriko is actually in view. She can actually Suzu from here, but she would have to be pretty fast to do it, right? So, um, but anyways, anyways, if this was an earlier uh, earlier bomb, it would be great because why? Bap cannot lamp in time, right? And also Kiriko has to teleport and then Suzu downwards to finish them off, right? So they have to do either one of those or both or else the Ryan dies, okay? So either A, you get the pick or B, you cause the Kiriko to use both of her abilities to keep the Ryan alive and that's huge, right? Jump and also Suzu. Without those two, Kiriko can't really do anything. She can't, she can just, she can shoot at you. Sure. But she's committing a lot to keep the run alive. It's an overcommitment. Okay. It's an overcommitment. Um, because now that she doesn't know what's in here. She doesn't know what's in here. Right. So it could be you, it could be somebody else, or maybe she doesn't even get the Suzu off in time. Maybe she teleports and then she just dies with the bomb. Right. So it's like, there's always a risk. There's a high risk for the Kirigo to do a jump and a Suzu once you bomb. And that's always worth it for you. Um, but you have to make sure that she has to, she has to jump. If you throw a bomb on the Reinhardt and the carry goes right next to you, if she just Suzu's it off, then that's not worth it. But making her jump and then Suzu, that's huge. Okay, because again, now she has no way to get out, right? Now you can finish her off maybe, or maybe she misses the Suzu and she dies, or whatever. So. Yeah, Suzu's cleanse, sorry. Yeah, Suzu is, is Kiriko E. Sorry, it's just a short word. A shorter word for Suzu... Do I have it here? No, I, I can't. I don't know. It's I forgot what it's called. But how's it going, Sinan? It feels as though he spends too much resources for movement and not like engagement. <coughs> I would say so, a little bit here or there. But that was good, right? He saved his blinks when he didn't need it, or when, you, when they didn't need it. Big shatter in the back. Care, care, care. Suzu. So that was a jump and Suzu. Watch the Kiriko. Back out, back out. Good. Oh, protection Suzu. Protection Suzu. Bap. What in the world? Okay, so I think he could have gone after he could have gone after the widow. He could have gone after the widow. It was a perfect time for you to go for the widow. All right? Just crouch, 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 crouch. Come back for the widow. Go back around. Yeah, you're you're in position to do so. Um, because if you go onto the widow, Kiriko uses a jump to get back to the widow to survive. Now the Kiriko does not have abilities to protect. The Reinhardt on your team. Okay. If the Widow is in a position for you to jump on and it forces the enemy team to use cooldowns to keep her alive or just to get to her, that is value. Because what's keeping the enemy Rhine alive? Resources wise, it's the BAP and also the Kiriko. So what are you doing? You're peeling off the resources from the Reinhardt and you're distributing the resources to somewhere else, which is the Widow, right? So what does that mean? That means the Reinhardt on this team, on blue team, he now only has one support. Your Reinhardt on your team has both his supports and also a Widow in the back, right? So he has double the support. He's going to out, out resource this guy in no time. If you are able to pull the support away from the main fight and put him onto the Widow, because the Widow is in a really vulnerable situation here. She's alone. She's out in the open. Like you can literally just go and brrr, you can drill her. And if the Kiriko doesn't do anything about it, Widow's dead. Right? So you're pulling the resource away from the main fight towards somebody in the back. Um, and then you are in a good position to do so because you're up here. Okay. Always be thinking about it. That's how Tracer thrives. That's how Tracer thrives. So you don't want to be here, right? Because this is just like in a 1v1 situation. Tracer can survive you, right? Recalls, you recall. It's kind of like, and it's like a stalemate or one of you guys die, but it's not a... Like Tracer can fend for herself against an enemy Tracer, right? <laughs> but Widow versus Tracer, Widow, she would probably end up either getting one clipped or just die. So this is why, even if you don't kill the Widow, it's fine. 
it's fine. But most likely than not, the Widow needs help to survive a Tracer. Unless she has insane aim and gets a good headshot. But that takes a lot of skill, right? Not many, not many Widows can do that. So. But obviously, just don't make yourself easy to hit, right? Don't jump in the air and then blink and then blink. Right? Make yourself erratic. Hard to, hard to predict. This is fine. Whoop. Use jump. Okay, make him use lamp if you can. Nice, that's lamp. Back out, back out, back out. Back out, back out, back out. Nice. Oh, close. That was close. That was, that was unlucky timing, to be honest. That was really unlucky timing. Yeah. I can't say that was a mistake. I can't say that was a mistake, but... <laughs> I would have done the same, to be honest. So you have the tracer, okay. Care, okay, care, okay, care. Okay. Big shatter. Big suzu. Yeah. That's rough. That's rough. So I think going in, you're you're going in, you're using a lot of cooldowns, as somebody said earlier. Um, Hell's Recon. Hell's Recon is onto something here. Okay. You see the tracer here. You can't engage. You can't engage. Right? If you come in here, you do a lot of damage. I mean, Tracer is still behind you. Tracer has the advantage here because she's doing damage from behind. You're not even looking in this direction, right? You would basically have to one clip somebody like all headshots and then finish somebody off and then recall for this to be worth it, right? Because you already have pressure coming into the fight by the enemy Tracer. You have pressure coming in from one direction and now you're going to have pressure coming in from this direction because you're applying, you're shooting from this direction. You're going to turn around. So you're going to have pressure from the front and also pressure from the back, right? How easy or how hard is it going to be for you to get a one clip on, right? It's going to be very, very difficult. So <laughs> this was a waste of a recall, right? How much value did you give or did you take away from the enemy team? Not much value, just a little bit of attention, which is okay, but not much, right? That was huge though, Urine did get a huge shatter, but now you go back in, now you don't have the resource to get out, right? So, there's also, there was no team follow-up, so no one can cut up lies on it. Yeah, I mean, there, there was a good shatter, right? There was a good shatter, but I mean, even with or without the shatter, or even without you here, like Ryan could have just done it the same, right? Because then Reinhardt's down here. He can just jump down, boop. Right? You're not distracting a you're not distracting a Reinhardt. You're distracting a backline. But either way, Ryan is going to get the shatter off no matter what. So maybe if you waited like a second or two longer, then you would have been able to come back, do a little bit of damage, and then recall this, and then you go back in again. But now you didn't have recall because you used it too early, and now you're kind of stuck. Okay, so try not to dive in too deep if there is a tracer that knows that you're around. Try not to commit. Don't overcommit on the enemy team. It's okay for you to commit on the tracer because, you know, if it depends on if you're better than the enemy tracer, right? Um, right now, it seems kind of... I haven't really seen you guys 1v1 each other yet, but it doesn't seem like one tracer is demolishing the enemy tracer's backline more than the other. So I feel like you guys are kind of on even footing. So if you guys are on even footing, it's okay for you to duel each other. What I would do is I would try to duel the enemy tracer, get some feel on it, if you are better than the enemy tracer, then you can go into the back line and destroy them. But from the looks of it, it looks like she's doing a really good time, or it looks like a, they're doing a really good job, right? Keeping you at bay. If they're keeping you at bay, then you might want to get rid of them first. Okay. Because they're stopping you from doing a lot on the enemy back line. They're kind of just there and they're just like shooting at you. Now, if you can get rid of her, right? If you can assert dominance, then you can finish her off and then you can go on the rest of the back line. Oh, right here. Snow key, right? Um, <laughs> but you guys are, are like even, you guys are like even in, uh, what was it? Even in skill. 
because if you're because if you're a lot better than the enemy tracer, you can drill the back line a lot more easily. But right now you're having trouble, right? So it's kind of like, all right, and I, I need to deal with the tracer now. Nice. doing pretty well you have dash you have that oh i thought you had dash never mind nice good job you almost have blade just don't die don't die don't die don't die just survive yeah just don't die so you have three on cart or oh, you need three on cart what do you have you have no blade or no nano no kirika ult you have damage boost though a little bit too, yeah. Yeah. A little bit too obvious. Okay. A little too obvious. You're coming through the front, right? You're going through the front. And you're making it obvious where you're coming from. Um, best place for you to hang around is probably around one of these walls, or you go from the high, you come up from top, right? Dash up, go in, or come up from an off angle. Okay. You're shooting a little bit of shots into the Reinhardt. You probably should have bladed already before the Reinhardt touched. Because what are you trying to do here? You're not trying to stop them from touching the point because there's no way that your team can actually do that. Your team doesn't have sleep. Your team doesn't have whole hog, right? Yeah, you guys also don't have a tank. So they are going to make it out. Whether or not you like it, they're going to touch. So what is your goal right now? Your goal is to destroy the backline when the when the tank comes in. So when the Rhine is already about to come in, you want to be in the backline already. So this was a little bit too late and also at a bad angle. Okay. Right here. Once you see the Rhine charging in, what do you do? Dash up, blade, go into the backline. That's what you should be doing. Because if he charges in, you know where is he not. Where is he not? He is no longer going to be in the back line for a little bit, right? So you want to avoid all damage and all contact until your blade is out, then you attack. If you attack from the front and you do a little bit of damage to the Rhine, well, right, look how much damage you're taking. You got a swing, 130, blade is way too late. You're not going to kill the Rhine. Your goal is not to kill the Rhine because if you kill everybody else on the enemy team, your team can clean up the Rhine. Okay, so... It was a little bit of a panic blade, but your resources are better used somewhere else, and that's back here. Okay, so and you probably don't play. I, mean, I don't know if you play a lot of Genji or not, but yeah. Okay, but yeah, once you see the Rhine leave the back line, boom, you go in and you destroy the back line. That's what you need to do. Okay, because Rhine is Rhine is kind of your counter. Rhine is kind of your counter, right? Because he has shatter for you or he has charge for you. But as soon as he charges in. He can't do that to you anymore because he just used it. So backline is free. Kill the backline and kill Ryan afterwards. Tracer burn pulse at the moment to even. Yeah, yeah. So if she used pulse, so she baits out cooldowns. That means it's, easy, it's an easier, you know, it's an easier blade for you in the backline. That's why I swapped the Kedji last thirty seconds. I try to win the blade. Yeah, yeah. But again, you don't want to be using it on the Reinhardt, and you want to be using it early. You want to be using it early, especially if they're panicking to get onto the point, right? So. And again, the only reason why it was good to use it early is because the Ryan disengaged from his team by charging onto the point. If the Ryan was kind of like holding his shield up and protecting his team, you don't blade it. You don't blade in. You don't blade in without support. But once the Ryan charges the point, he's leaving his team behind. That's when you go in and you just destroy the back line. Whack him with your stick. Okay. You hear Widow? Yep. Uh... Oh, unlucky. Unlucky timing. Right when she dropped off. <laughs> All right, you saw that. You saw that. The, the spider mine, right? You saw the spider mine. Care, care, care. You hear the tracer in your back line? You don't really have to do. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. 
Right. You don't want to be looking for the enemy tracer. You do not want to be looking for the enemy tracer. You're wasting a lot of time. Right. Tra you hear tracer on that side, but where can she be? She can be in low ground. She could be on high ground. She can be anywhere at the moment, right? So. That's a lot of time wasted on the tracer. I'm assuming you were, you were responding to the tracer in the back. Right? But your team can take care of it. Your team can take care of the, of, of the tracer. Okay. You need to be in their back line. You don't want to be chasing her unless she is actually destroying your team. If she is destroying your back line, then you need to do something about her. But she's kind of just not been doing anything a lot. She's just kind of like... And she's playing very scared, you know? Right, she's not doing much. This is the enemy tracer. Right. But now you guys lost the Widow. And then now it's pretty much over. Right. So you need to be on the enemy Widow. So that your Widow can be the one doing this. Okay. So where is the enemy Widow? So you killed you killed the Widow at the first point. First part. Right. You need to be back here. You need to be re-engaging. And reapplying pressure. So that the more that you can deal pressure, the more that your Widow can pop off. Against the enemy Widow. You messed up your blink on the Widow. <laughs> uh, that was my intention to get high ground by going around, not the Tracer. Oh, all the way around? You don't have to go this far though, right? You don't have to go that far. Yeah, you're getting shot at here. You're getting shot at here, but it's okay for you to pick up because why? Look at this. What does this mean? This means that the Kirigo is now focusing heals on the Reinhardt. What does that mean? That means you go back. She can't be doing both at the same time. She can't be watching this and also healing her Reinhardt at the same time. She can't do both. It's impossible. She cannot do that. Like, there is no physical way for her to actually do it from that location. Okay. So now you see that the attention is now all on Rhine. Go back. Go back onto the Widow. Make her turn around, make the Kiriko turn around. If the Kiriko turns around, that means this Rhine is not taking any heals from the Kiriko. Right? This is resources that are being drawn away from the Reinhardt because you're being distracting. That's fine. Because now that, what does that mean? That means you have double the support on your Sigma and they only have one that's just kind of trying to peel for the back line. Okay. I'm been looking around the corner for so long, I just thought it'd be better for me to swap position. Yes and no. Yes and no. You're not in huge danger by doing so. That's what I'm saying. Because of the fact that the attention is all on the enemy Reinhardt. If the attention was all here, if everybody's like focusing here, like, hey, there's a tracer here, wait for her to come out and then we'll finish her off. But that's not the case, right? You can see that resources are being thrown into the Reinhardt. That means they are not paying attention. So you, it's like you have to know where the enemy attention is. Where is the enemy attention, right? Heals are all on the enemy team Reinhardt, so they're not paying attention to the back. That's when you go into the back. Okay. This is just way too long. Like, by the time you get back here, the fight's already over. Like, you got to the back line, boom. You guys lost two, it's over. Right? It's too much of a long distance. You have a good idea, though. You have the right idea. Okay. But, I think that only really applies at the beginning of the fight. When you have time. When you have time to set up, you'd be like, okay, my team is going to engage here and the last three fights I've engaged from the same angle as well. But they know that I'm coming from there again. So now I should swap. That's fine. But if it's like in the middle of a fight, it's not worth the time. Because if the fight has been happening already, you guys are just, you, can't, you have the ability to just lose the fight in an instant. Does that make sense? So the timing of your positioning, repositioning is very important. It's very, very important. Mm -hmm. Nice. Not bad, not bad. Oh, rip. Rip. Yeah, I knew you were trying to touch because you're the only one that can touch. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, so again, that's why when it comes down to like being unpredictable, there's always a time for that. You know? There's always a time for that. Nice. Good job. That was good. Just be patient. Be patient. Look at what your team is looking at, okay? I want you to be looking at where your team is more often than not. Okay? 
You should be looking at where's your Sigma. What's your Sigma looking at? What's your Kiriko looking at? What is your Widow looking at? Right? <laughs> looking at what your team is looking at will give you an idea of what's going on below you. Okay? You don't see anything here. You don't see anything. Where's everybody? I don't see anybody. All I can do right now is here and listen. What's my team looking at? Okay. Oh, he's shooting arrow. He's trying to shoot below. That means there's somebody in this room. Right? What's the Kiriko looking at? Where is she shooting? Oh, she's shooting main. That means somebody's main as well. Right? Take a quick glance at what your team is doing. And they'll give you a lot more information than what you're looking at right now, which is nothing. Well, for the first few seconds. But now you can see the right. Right? But it's okay for you to glance at your teammates. Any tips for Tracer 1v1s? <clears throat> Best thing is to force the enemy recall. Force the enemy recall first. And then you can uh, be aggressive. I do have a, a whole Tracer versus Tracer guide, I think. It's called exclamation mark TVT. Yeah. That's my Tracer versus Tracer guide. But the number one thing, number one thing is to try to make them use their cooldowns before you. Um, and the best way to do that is to go for blink melees. Blink melees are the best way to do consistent damage because they're easier to hit and they also make you harder to hit at the same time. There it is, Tracer vs. Tracer. Tracer no recall. <laughs> nice, Tracer has no recall. He has to use recall. Oh, that's rough. You almost got him though. But you made her, you made her use a lot of her cooldowns and got out, so that's fine. Tracer does have re- Oh! Oh! Oh, spicy! I like that. I like that. That was good. Okay, in that 1v1, I would have chased, then recalled after. Yeah, but he was 1 HP, though. That's the reason why he shouldn't chase. That's the reason why he shouldn't chase. How's it going, Nachi? Right. You should not chase here. Do not chase. Okay, because why? You only have one blink. You only have one blink. If you use one blink here, boop, and you want to chase the tracer, you don't know what's looking here. You do not know what's looking here. 42 HP is way too low. It's way too low. Okay, because what does that mean? That means the Kiriko can just throw a dart. She can actually kill you with it. Almost, she can almost kill you with just a body shot, but they have a Widow, right? If the Widow just looks at you, boop, you're dead. Easy shot, easy body shot. Right? This is too risky. I would not have chased here. Because you only have one blink. If you have one blink, if you have three blinks, that's fine. Because when you use one blink, and then you see a widow looking at you, you can blink again, and then you can do you can do damage. You can reposition. But he is struggling on cooldowns right now to chase. So it's not worth it at this moment. Okay. So. Depends on the situation. Yo, what up, Nachi? How you doing, man? Good to see you again, man. How are you enjoying Tracer? I bet you're loving Tracer now, aren't you? Tracer feels so good, right? Oh, you must be popping off on Tracer nowadays, dude. You playing Overwatch too? Hey, welcome back, Evil Peach. Welcome back. Ooh, nice shot. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, back up. Not worth it. See, so right now, this is a good time for you to change your location. Right? It's at the beginning of the fight. Like, you went into this, you went into the high ground, they kind of know that you're coming from this angle. The fight hasn't really started yet, your hog is kind of feeding actually, he's kind of without your team. He shouldn't be here right now. Your team is all the way back here, he might actually die here. Um, but at this point, before the fight has really started, it's okay for you to reposition somewhere else. Because the fight hasn't really started yet, right? This would be a good time. Because the enemy team is kind of regathering themselves, right? And they're not like, in your backline already. So this is a good time. This is a good time. Good early night. See you next week. Have a good night. <laughs> she feels so nice with the damage ref again. Yeah. Yeah, see, this is good. Yeah. This is nice. They use the mortality field. And Suzu. So that's okay. But it's a little too much. Especially on a Reinhardt. Alright, the Reinhardt can survive without even a Suzu. So that was a little bit of an overwide. Again, right here. Okay, you know there's a Kiriko here. You know there's a Widow here. Okay, right here. This is dangerous. 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 
You're turning your back towards the enemy team. Headshot galore, or Kiriko just body shots you. Body if they both body shot you, you die. Okay. You turn your back to them. Even if it's just for a split second, they can nail you. Alright. So be very, 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 very careful about that. I would honestly just have gone for the widow in the back instead. Right. Because you have walls. You have walls. What do you do? If you have walls, just chill here. You use walls and go in after that. Bait them. Right? Distract them from behind. Stop it so that they don't get the high ground here. Okay. So, because it's, again, it's just too dangerous to turn your back to two people like that. Uh, where should I blink when fighting people? Behind them, 90 degrees, or just left and right? Uh, depends on how the enemy team is moving. If the enemy team is moving left and right, if they crouch spam 80, 80, 80, you want to blink to their sides because it makes it look like they're not moving at all. Um, if they don't 80, 80 spam a lot, then it doesn't really matter. I think doing 180 is, is more beneficial to blink behind them, um, especially if they're not fast to do the turning. If you're on console, for sure, you want to do a 180. You want to go behind them because it takes time for them to turn around. Okay. I can demonstrate the 80 80 spamming thing um, after this game. Are you on console, uh, Rob or Bob? Or are you on uh, PC? Yeah, so that's a little close. So I think right here, it was too close. Um, you don't want to get this close to a cast because why? Because they can do that. Easy. All right. You can't dodge it. If you're like right on top of him, he just throws it and it's just going to attach itself to you. So you're making it easy for him. Let's take a look at it from his screen. Like, he, it, it, that was not very hard for him to do, right? Just throw it in your general direction and now you have to recall. Okay. I definitely think it's better for you to fight in mid-range. Fight mid-range. Fight here. Go for an easy one clip. Why? Because he has to walk up the stairs or down the stairs. So it's easy aiming. Easy tracking. Get him down to like 50% HP at least, maybe. Then go for a blink around. Go behind. And then if he throws his sticky on top of you, you always want to create distance between yourself. Okay. Because this blink, you landed directly on top of him. You don't want to be there. Yeah, Tracer has really good reach. This is, you're going to be doing full damage here. Okay. But what happens if you blink this direction? First of all, you are now one shot, technically. He can go for a what? What can he do? He can go for a, a shot, a headshot in a melee and just kill you instantly. And you can't recall it because you can't react to that. Or he will stick you, which is an easy stick, and that forces you to recall. Well, what happens if it forces you to recall? Now you can't re-engage because, well, now this is, you're in this, you know, you're in this hallway and all he has to do is just shoot at you and you have no blinks to get in, right? So now you have to disengage. Okay. So I think you were a little bit less confident about your range, but she has good range. This is more than one, more than enough to one clip a cast. More than one enough, more than close enough. And again, you don't want to get this close to a cast. This is asking for death. Okay. Whether or not it is meant for him, whether he means to go for a headshot melee, you can just die. You can just die. Most casses, if they get a tracer that's close to them, like right on top of their face, they will go for one shot and then they will melee because they're like, oh, maybe if the first is a headshot, I can melee them and just give them instantly. And you can't do anything about it. All right, so be very careful when you get close to cast. He doesn't have flash anymore, but he's still scary. He's still scary. Yeah, one shot melee is pretty scary. I've gotten gimped by that a couple of times. Uh, Chrissy, uh, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate you. Uh, yeah, so if you're fighting people, you should be fighting onto the side. Fight on the side if they're 80 80 spamming. Um, but if you feel like they're kind of slow on the aim, blinking behind is the best. Behind tends to be better because if you're behind them, you have a less chance to be noticed. Right? Let's say you shoot a Kiriko from behind. She turns around, she starts shooting at you, but what about the rest of the team? How much do they have to do to look at you? They also have to turn around. It's a lot of work. Right? Yeah, they, oh, I gotta turn around and deal with the tracer. But what does that do? That also opens them up to the front. If they're looking at you, they're not looking at the front. 
And if they're not looking at the front, oh well, look, there's a hog. He can go for free hooks, right? But if you're on the side, let's say you're attacking, you're attacking from the side on the Kiriko, right? What can she do? She can just go like this. She can just back up. Oh, I can I can shoot at the uh, I can shoot at the tracer from the side, and also I can see the I can see the uh, the hog. I can see what's going on on the side, and also deal with the tracer at the same time. But now, if I'm turned around, I am completely blind from behind, so that leaves them open for more mistakes. So behind usually is better. Recently started playing shooting tracer. This is really fun. Came across the channel. Yay! Welcome, welcome. Um, <laughs> if you haven't checked out the new uh, or the uh, the tracer guide. Check it out on YouTube. Yes, Spanky, what do you want? Oh my gosh. Spanky, stop. Ah, my cat. Oh. Do you break down your own games like this or just VODs from other players? I normally break down other players' VODs. Um, sometimes I do go to my own VODs and I check out what I've done wrong. Um, usually when it's per request. I do it per request, but if I... If I feel like I've done a really, I've had a really bad game, then I will, I will go for it. But most of the time, when I glance at my own vods, it's just kind of like, where did I go wrong? What could I have done differently? I don't really like explain every little single thing that I did, unless there's like somebody that asks about it, then I'll explain it. The bat doesn't die. Yeah, let's take a look at that last fight, actually. So they used the mortality field, right? They also used Suzu. Going for the Kiriko. Oh, that was close. That was close. That was close, man. You almost got him. You almost got him. But this is the tough part. This is the tough part. You're going in solo, right? You don't have anybody else with you, so it's very difficult for you. If you find yourself going really deep into the backline and it doesn't die, then don't be don't feel bad okay don't feel bad because why what did you do you didn't do nothing that fight you didn't do nothing that fight what did you do you provided value to your team you actually did okay because why you did you actually did a lot for your team that fight take a look You baited Suzu. Right? That's enough already. That's a lot. They use they use lamp. Right? And now so you guys lost one. And that's okay. Like this fight was already over when they used the Kuriko. Um they use Suzu again here because they are not they're afraid of you being in the back line. Right? You almost got the pick. That's okay. But even if you got the pick, your right heart. Or the Reinhardt and the enemy team killed your bat. So you guys are still down one. Like, how much more do you have to do to win this fight? You actually have to kill pretty much the entire team. You know? So you've you've done a lot for your team already. But let's just say you got the bat dead. Right? It's still Sojourn, Cass, and Kiriko versus these two. Right? So I would not say that you did nothing that fight. I would not say you did nothing that fight. So don't, don't count yourself out. Okay, don't count yourself out. It's not all about getting the kills. It's not always all about getting the kills. What is your shortcut for uh, up and down? Um, you press B. Well, actually, no. Mine is scroll up and scroll down. But I, I changed it in my desktop box, in my options. You go to controls, you go to replay. Right here. Decrease playback speed, increase playback speed. Controls, replay. Then you can change it. I changed mine up to scroll, down, scroll up and scroll down. Let's just finish this one before I get a bowl. Bowl of popcorn. Overuse of recall. Overuse of recall. Okay. Look at this. Where are you? You are in your team's backline. You are safe. You are right next to two support. Literally right next to two support. Okay, so was there actually a need for you to recall here? No. No, it brings you closer to the enemy team, but that's not exactly where you want to be, right? That's not your goal, right? Both tanks are dead, 
Okay, both tanks are dead. You do kind of want to be as safe as you possibly can. So you don't want to be engaging without recall. So you want to save your recall to survive as long as you can. And by doing so, you can stall the point while your tank gets back. Okay, so this recall was a little bit too early, too much. You wanted your position back? Yeah, but then that's not that far, is it? Where was your position? All right. Is that worth it to position though? Now that's the question. Is it worth for you to recall just to get back here? You can actually essentially use a blink to get into the same area. Blink here, and you can stall here. All right. I, I honestly... <coughs> it's a little scary to do that. It's a little scary to do that. Um, I definitely think you could have done it without recall. Right? I definitely think you could have used your blinks to get in and do that instead. Um, so. I was scared of window to use blinks. Okay. I can see it. Yeah, I would say you just definitely want to stall as long as you can. But the reason why is because if you don't have recall anymore, it's dangerous to go in. You know what I mean? So it's like, if you're fighting on point without recall, it's like, it's very, very scary. It's very scary. It can turn around instantly. You know? So I think it's because I, it's more about, I guess I respect the enemy team a lot more. Right. I tend to expect, uh, I, I respect the enemy team a lot. Like, because I've gotten gimped a lot. Um, and so I'm very careful. But it, it, you're, you're, you're confident, you're really confident, but sometimes you kind of need to just let go of the gas just a little bit. I like the name Pickles. Pickles, 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 Pickles! Ah, that's a rip. So that was just the unlucky recall right here. Oh, you also didn't have to recall here. You didn't have to recall. Right? You're weak. Right? You're weak. But... Where's your team? Your team is... Your Kiri goes there. You can stall for a little bit. Your hog is on cart. Right? Your hog is on cart. What can you do? You can just stall. Chill for a little bit. Just chill. You see the diva shooting at you? Where can you go? You can also go for the health pack here. You can go for the health pack. Yeah, there, there, there's a sergeant here. Sure. But then now if you blink in here and you see a sergeant, then you can recall. Right? Because what happens when you recall? Where does it put you back? On to the point. And this is not where you want to be. Because once you recall and you take damage, what's the point of recalling? Right? It would have been better for you to use your blink here deal with the soldier and then if you have to recall at least recall back to a safe position recalling back on the point when you're surrounded by like four people that's like a recipe for death just like at the recall where does it put you right you are on point you don't know what's around you you don't see the tracer you can't you can barely see the bap right and there's a carry on high ground there's just too much stuff going around and also your hog is already contesting point so there's no there's really no, no reason for you to have to recall to touch because your hog is touching already so biggest thing here okay you're in a safe position already you're safe right here you're safe your whole team is here okay be patient just chill blink for the health pack check to see what's in this room if it's not dangerous just wait all right. Let your hog touch. Let your hog touch. You see the soldier slide in, then you blink, or you recall if you have to, and then you deal with the soldier. All right? This is a much more easily handled situation in this room. Why? Because it's a 1v1. It's a 1v1. You're, this is a good spot for the fight. 1v1, health pack. And also, you're within line of sight of your team. Here, not so great. There's freaking tracks on the floor there's a bat there's a freaking hog over here got an ult, ult thing. Your, your hog is ulting you know you got people on high ground there's just too many things for you to keep track of but here you can handle you can handle a soldier in one-on-one -on -one, right so pick your fights pick your fights but did you guys win this Uh, 
I'm trying to think about like the general, general, um, let me think, let me think. I don't, I did not see a lot of 1v1s. Yeah, I did not see a lot of 1v1s. You tended to tunnel the support a lot. You tended to tunnel, to tunnel the support a lot. Um, you liked to fight where there were multiple people looking at you. Um, and you wanted to, you always put yourself in a location where you're getting shot from behind and also from the front at the same time. So what you have to do is you have to isolate yourself so that you're fighting one person at a time and that you only have to pay attention to from one angle. Okay. That's the big, that's the biggest tip of this entire thing. That's the biggest part. You're putting yourself in the position a lot where you cannot handle two different situations at the same time, right? Like when you're going for the back line, you're ignoring the Widow in the back. So the Widow can freely shoot at you, but then now you're trying to focus on the bat. You can't do both. You can't dodge the Widow and also shoot the bat. It's better to isolate yourself. Okay, I should just deal with the person who's in the farthest in the back, AKA the Widow. Once I'm done with the Widow, then go forward after that. Okay. Isolate yourself. Um, I used the tone of the DPS and might be one a lot on Overwatch one. I remember I took your tips and that's why I submitted this. So I see if I change and improve. It's okay for you to tunnel the DPS as long as you get the kills. As long as you get the kills. But this time you tunneled the support a lot and you did not get a lot of kills, unfortunately. Right? There's a difference. If you changed your tunnel and you tunneled the Widow the entire game and she was dead all the time, that's fine. That's fine. As long as you get the value that you're looking for, you can tunnel. As long as you don't like feed as well. But there were a lot of opportunities for you to tunnel a different target and actually get value from it. Um, so I wouldn't say Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2 are completely different games, but in that scenario, Widow was your biggest pick. Widow, Widow, Widow could have been your the, the biggest person for you to focus and you would have got like a lot more value. Yeah, no worries, dude.